The royal family have always been warmly welcomed by the people of Romney Marsh and Dungeness. Now they're preparing for a different kind of royal arrival. They're getting ready for the reappearance of a new generation of queen short-haired bumblebees, brought over from Sweden to be released at the RSPB Reserve at Dungeness in Kent. These bumblebees disappeared from the UK during the 1980s. Scientists blame the disappearance of the short-haired bumblebee from our shores on the loss of Britain's wildflower meadows. We've lost 97% of our meadows since the Second World War. So before these queen bees can be brought back, enormous efforts are needed to restore the natural environment just the way they like it. Over the last 10 years, we've been recreating really important bumblebee habitats. We realised how valuable the area of Kent is for a lot of rare bumblebees. And these fields behind me were arable 10 years ago, and we've been reverting them back to the flower-rich meadows that the bumblebees need. Uh, the site's ideal because it's got lots of red clover. It's, uh, uh, it's a lot of sunny outlooks, good... Uh, good quality feeding for them and uh, and of course there's no no pollution let's hope we keep it that way <laughs> Dr Nikki Gammons and a team of volunteers are on their way to Skåne in southern Sweden home to a healthy population of short-haired bumblebees the Swedish authorities have given the team a license to collect a hundred queens for reintroduction to the UK Bumblebees are incredibly important because they are pollinators of many of our agricultural crops and of our wildflowers. We need to reintroduce this bee back to the UK because we've had two species that have gone extinct and seven which are very rare and threatened. So we need to highlight the plight of our bumblebee declines. Collecting the bumblebees isn't always easy, even in Sweden where they are relatively common. The team are frustrated as cold weather delays the flowering of white dead nettle, the breakfast of choice for hungry queens when they emerge from hibernation. So this is our first short-haired bumblebee that we collected today. So the temperature is 21 degrees and this is what we predicted, the temperature roughly that the bees will come out, about 18, 19 upwards. So this is our first really good day of hot sunshine. The white dead nettle is starting to flower and our first queen has emerged. Before they can be released, the queens must spend two weeks in quarantine. This is to make sure they don't pass on any diseases to other British bee species. In Dungeness, we've been working very hard with farmers and landowners to give these bees a home for when they actually return and are released. So we've actually created over 850 hectares of flower-rich habitat waiting for these bees' return. Local farmer Larry Cook of Moneypenny Farm has been sowing 12 metre wide strips of insect friendly plants around his fields in preparation for the bumblebees. Oh, how wonderful, the clover's just beginning to come. Maybe late, but better late than never. We've planted specific species of grasses and clovers, red clover being of very great importance to the bumblebees. And the tracks are all joined together so that the movement of bumblebee uh, can occur through a large area of the site and we've got to feed them for as long a part of the summer as possible. Brian Neal of Shirley Moor Farm has also planted a large acreage with pollen and nectar-rich plants. I think farmers as a whole should look after all wildlife, and particularly bees. Bees because of the pollination. Um, I'm getting to be a bit of a geriatric now, and I've seen the insect population of this country continue to fall. Like I can't see how it's good and we're going to need it more and more. The change in biodiversity on the farm after just three years of planting for bumblebees has been dramatic. 
Uh, we've seen changes in the insect population. Uh, they've increased. Uh, numbers have increased along with all wildlife. All wildlife has responded to the habitat that we've introduced. However, the bumblebees will not be able to rely on farms alone if they're to become established and spread further afield across England. They'll need our gardens. One place where bees will certainly find a home is in the wildflower-rich meadows of the world-famous Great Dixter House and Gardens. Great Dixter is a great place to see wildlife, especially on these, these meadow habitats. It's a great place for bumblebees, for butterflies. You know, it's alive. We've got neighbours who are very sympathetic to what we're doing and suddenly they're thinking about turning their, their grassland into meadowland as well and perhaps another neighbour will do that and another one and with these hedges that continue you'll have these wonderful wildlife corridors and, and all of that lumped in together will, will have a significant effect. Alison Noyes runs a and b on the Dungeness estate near the release site. I went to a bee talk last year and as a result of that I've planted three lots of Bowles Mauve Everlasting Wallflower which is particularly good for the short-haired bumblebee, the long-tongue bees and that's um, very easy to grow and relatively cheap so that's been a great success and it's a lovely colour and oh ye yellow flag iris which is an absolute must for long-tongued bees of which the short-haired bumblebee is one. Further away, at Littlestone, gardener Louise Barton has set out to provide a year-round habitat for the bees. What we do is we have a whole different range of um, lavenders that come on stream at different times of the year. We have things like Eleagnus, which flowers at the end of, very much at the end of the season, and we have things like Daphne, which actually flower very early in the season, as, as early as January. So we can actually go through all the way from January to well, December. That's, that's really our objective, to make sure we do have a range of food for the bees throughout the year. Just as with any long-anticipated royal arrival, the big day finally comes. The sun shines and all is ready for the release of the repatriated queen bumblebees. We'll get you to release one as well. I'll do the After we release them today, what I'm really hoping for is that the queens will make nests, produce workers and successfully produce the next generation of queens. That would be amazing because then they would go into hibernation and emerge the next year. And that means that we have been successful in establishing the population. Nikki's dream may already be coming true. Seven short-haired worker bumblebees were spotted on the nature reserve at Dungeness during the summer weeks following the release. The queens are now feeding and adapting to their new surroundings and will continue to expand their realm as long as we give them a home. As I'm only a couple of miles away from the RSPB reserve, it is actually a real possibility that a short-haired bumblebee would make its way here and obviously the best thing of all would be if that bee uh, made a colony and then they were actually in my garden and that would be amazing. It does make me happy that I'm part of the agreement to it reintroduced and increased the population of bumblebees because we must do things for our own country. We are only custodians of the farm for the period of time that we are alive. <laughs>